Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you a couple of different techniques on how to set up one, two, and three point perspective grids for your pieces. Um, you can use this in any digital tool of your choice. If you're using traditional media, unfortunately you're only going to have to use, you know, uh, the, the tried and true methods of pen, paper, and a straight edge. However, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a technique for maybe finding uh, perspectives using one of these tools that you can apply to your traditional work. So uh, stay tuned. Now, I've set up the canvas with just a gray background and some frames over it. Uh, the reason I've put space around the frames is because for two and three point perspectives, often you, you want the vanishing points um, outside of the canvas frame because um, if they're too close together, things start to become very distorted. Now that might be something that you actually want in your piece, but if not, um, then it's easier to have a bit of space around your canvas. So the first method I'm going to use is uh, using perspective brushes within the tool that, that you want. So I'll just set up a one-point perspective. Whoops. A one-point perspective using this, this method. Um, I'm just going to create a new layer. Call it VP1. So that's vanishing point one. And the grid is basically, uh, the brush is a radial grid that looks like this. And when you stamp it down with a color, just one stamp, it creates a nice pattern of lines like that, which you can see here. And all you have to do is then move the layer and pick where you want your horizon line. Remember the VPs are on the horizon line, so you're essentially placing your horizon line um, and you transform it any way you want. Now, if you want your VP over here and it uh, doesn't extend all the way to the canvas edge, oops, just scale it up and place it. And there you go. Now, if you want in one point perspectives, the verticals and horizontals are all parallel. So in order to create that, we can create another layer. We'll call it horizontals. And there's another brush that you can use, which is just a grid of horizontal lines. I mean, a brush of horizontal lines. It looks like this. And we stamp it down once. And there you go. And then what you can do is just scale it. Scale it down as much as you want. Uh, and, whoops. There we go, we've got horizontals. Uh, if you want to lower the opacity because it's a bit dark, you can. I'll just move it so it's a bit easier to see. There you go. And for the verticals, I can just duplicate this layer, rotate. and scale into place. There you go. And again, lower down the opacity. Now, because uh, if, depending on how much you scale, uh, the grid might not be perfect, uh, or it might be stretched. So you can just put down, delete that, and put down another layer, and just another stamped layer, and just rotate it around. And use that. There you go. So just go back to that. So this is one point perspective all set up, ready to use, and you can align your drawing and painting according to those lines. Uh, the other method to create this is using a program called Carapace, and it's a free tool, and I'll provide the link to it, and I'll show you how to set that up. So here we go. Open it up. Now it's a very lightweight tool and there's nothing at all on the interface besides the canvas, which is great. If you want help uh, for keyboard shortcuts, which is how this program works, you just press F1 and they all come up here. Very, very easy. Now the first thing I'm going to do is F1 again to hide. And the first thing I'm going to do is resize the canvas. And now that's Control R. Nope, it isn't. It's Control N. And I know the size of my canvases were 
600 by 250. There you go. Uh, and it's in order to place a vanishing point down, all you have to do is press 1, 2, 3, up to 9. You have uh, you can have up to 9 vanishing points. So just by pressing 1, it pops down a vanishing point where your cursor is. And you can just click and drag and move that around really easy. So let's just select press vanishing point. If you want more grid uh, radial lines, then all you have to do is hit the up or down key and it adds more lines. Up adds more, down reduces the number. So that's good. Now for one point perspectives, if you want just a, a completely parallel grid uh, like we did in the previous example, all you have to do is press G. And there you go, a grid. And your one point perspective is all set up. In order to bring that into your program, all you have to do is press Control Shift C, go into your program, and let's just move to here and paste it in. I'm moving it around. Oops, I got the image the size slightly wrong. That's okay. I'll scale it. And I can put this layer, let's just do grid. Carapace, oops, oops. Carapace and set that to multiply. And there you go. You have your grid. Now, uh, a couple of things to notice about the difference between these two methods is uh, Carapace only plots out, obviously, what's on the canvas area itself. Um, and you can't change because it's just an image uh, from the clipboard that you pasted and you can actually change things on the fly and that's okay if you've already set up a perspective you like but if you like uh, uber control on your perspective and want to change things around um, you can actually do that with um, with the inbuilt method by just moving around the grids so uh, that is basically the technique that we're going to use now I'm just going to go ahead and create two and three point perspective grids uh, as well just to show you guys how it's done so I've just sped up the video to double speed uh, to go a little bit quicker um, so the first thing for the two point perspective is putting down the first VP and I'm just duplicating that grid and making another layer and calling it VP2 and placing that. Uh, scaling up so that we cover the entire canvas. Now if you want more radial lines in this method you have to duplicate the grid again and just rotate it around the center and merge it down and you get more lines to your grid. Placing the verticals in and there we have it. Quick and easy two-point perspective. So let's scale that up to cover the entire grid. There you go. So back in Carapace, um, just resetting. One to add one VP, two to add another VP. And you just click and drag. It's very easy. If you want to remove a VP, you have to hit Alt and the number of the vanishing point you want to remove. Uh, but just adding one Hitting the number again will add the vanishing point in the new place. So I've copied that, pasted it in, set to multiply, scale a bit because I got the size wrong, and there we have it. Uh, another thing to note about the carapace me method is you, if the vanishing points are off screen, you actually have to retrace them once you're in your painting program to figure out where the VPs are if you want to do more complex perspective um, maneuvers, but I'm not going to go into that. So I, I think the inbuilt method is a little bit more flexible and a bit more, you have a bit more control, but um, it, it really does depend what you prefer. I actually use a, a, a painting assistant, perspective assistant in Krita, which makes all of this a little bit redundant, but um, not every program has that ability. 
So let's just carry on to three-point perspective. So I've just borrowed those two VPs and duplicated one of them. And I'm now putting the other third vanishing point in. Often the third VP has, you know, tends to be quite uh, a lot further than the other two. Um, or you get quite a lot of distortion. Again, it, it does depend what what the needs of your image are. And here I'm just putting in a few lines to show the VP. Um, it's pretty terrible, but just to give you a quick indication. So let's hide all that and do the same thing in Carapace. So I'm just going to use these two VPs. I hit 3 to add the third VP, dragged it up, And I'm just fiddling around with the VPs. It's so easy. Control Shift C to copy, paste it into the program, set to multiply, and voila! Quick and easy th th three point perspective. So now I want to show you guys how to use Carapace to reverse engineer a perspective from an existing image. You can hit Control I to load in a background image. So this can be anything. And I'm picking this awesome piece of concept work from Bungie. And the way to do it is you right click and drag to create a trace line. Now a trace line is anything that you want to align to uh, a straight edge that follows VP. So you right click and drag and it puts down a line. And then you right click and drag again and it puts in another line and by hitting control shift and one or control shift two or control shift three um, whatever the VP you want it puts in the grid automatically as you can see it's better to make sure that your trace lines are further apart uh, from the image that you're tracing in order to be a bit more accurate and you can see it's been pretty accurate I used a trace line from two points two sides of the image so that was for the third VP pointing up now for the, I'm going to trace uh, another set of lines that I know converge to a second or the first vanishing point. And notice I'm going to opposite ends of the image and I'm tracing lines that I know converge to that VP and then control shift one, boom. There you go. There's your first vanishing point. And let's keep doing it. So we need the second vanishing point now. So I'm finding edges that align or converge to that second vanishing point. Um, and I had to hunt around a bit and there, there's one. So right click, drag. There you go, control shift th two and the third, uh, sorry, the second VP is in there. And now you can see the grid is all set up and the VPs are all set up. Pretty cool. You can do this for any image. If you hit I, you can um, actually hide the background image, which I think I will be doing. There you go. And then you can just take that into your program and use however you see fit. I hope that was uh, useful for you guys and you found it informative and that you can start getting up to speed and creating your one, two, and three-point perspectives really easily without any hassle. Thanks a lot!